Lily. I remember feeling anxious as a child, thinking that my parents might die when they'd go out to dinner, and I would sit in my parents' closet and smell my mom's sweaters and cry and think, like, something's so wrong with me. When I would have stomach aches or worry about people not liking me and, you know, kind of reading their energy and thinking, like, they're mad at me and how can I be better? Um, I really felt alone in that. Like, I thought something was really wrong with me and nobody else felt this way and why couldn't I just feel normal? Why did I sometimes feel so uncomfortable in my body? And I remember sometimes having some obsessive thoughts of, well, if I close this this many times or if this happened, maybe everything will go all right. And, um, searching for self-improvement, which I'm going to do another video about. But when I opened up about my anxiety and about my thoughts and I had somebody say like, me too. And my friend shared that she would put on her mom's bathrobe and smell it and cry too and have these kind of worst case scenario thoughts. I felt such relief. And, and the, you know, the more I would open up, the more people would share and the more I didn't feel alone and I didn't feel as crazy. And that's what really called for me to um, want to have a career in psychology. So I got my bachelor's in psychology, a master's in educational psychology, and I've been working as a school psychologist for 11 years. I'm currently the lead school psychologist in my district. And I wish I could say that once I studied psychology, I no longer had anxiety. Um, but that's not true. I started therapy when I was 20, and I loved my therapist. She was a huge component of me wanting to be a therapist because I could go to her and say everything that was in my mind and I did not feel crazy. I knew I could share with her my worst fear of life. Beverly, that was her name. She was awesome. I hit somebody in my car on my way here and she'd be like, all right, here's what we're going to do. Um, so I felt like I had all these shameful worries and thoughts and just things that made me a bad person and I could share with her and she just put me at ease. So I really wanted to be a therapist. Um, and in addition to going to just traditional talk therapy, I also tried neurofeedback, somatic therapy, acupuncture, Chinese herbs, emotional freedom technique, tapping, um, journaling, the secret, law of attraction, which I mean, all of these things like I'm into and it's not like I don't do kind of any of these things, but I also did meditation, mindfulness. I did a six week mindfulness based stress reduction program. I did, I worked in a small group on a weekend long learning Vedic meditation and I would sit and meditate, you know, for 20 minutes twice a day for a long time. I also worked personally just with a mindfulness coach. I did yoga therapy one-on-one. -on -one. I was very into yoga therapy. I would want to incorporate it into my practice as well. I've also done week-long retreats. I did the Hoffman process. I went to on-site. And then I loved this all. Like, I, I, I enjoy working on myself. But... A lot of that kept me stuck in suffering. Oh, I also did cognitive behavioral therapy, which um, I had a panic attack when I was trying out a medication. I had a panic attack on the freeway and it totally freaked me out. And so I avoided driving on the freeway after having like multiple more panic attacks just because I would actually was so afraid of having a panic attack that I would cause myself to have a panic attack, just constantly like searching my body. Like, does anything seem to off, feel off? Is today the day I'm going crazy? Um, and I did cognitive behavioral therapy on myself, and it was really helpful. I did get over, I mean, I didn't drive on the freeway for a year, and in Los Angeles, that's saying a lot. So I tried every method, and a lot of them worked, but they also took work. They took effort, and I would lose steam, because we often do, you know? And so when I had all these how-tos and these things I needed to do, sometimes I would lose steam, but also, often I would get really obsessive about it. I... Um, have a history of disordered eating and kind of a messed up relationship to exercise. Not now, but I did. And so a lot of it was alluring too to be like, maybe if I have the perfect diet, if I eat this anti-anxiety anti diet, or if I can be perfectly paleo and perfectly primal, and if I can eat liver, like I'm not going to have any mental health issues. And if I, maybe if I'm eating like a raw diet or raw cream and raw dairy and I'm going to sleep in a super dark room that's going to be like a cave. I'm going to wear an eye mask. I'm going to make sure I'm sleeping by 10 p.m. I'm going to get eight hours of sleep, um, supplements, herbs. And I, I, ha I wanted to be perfect at all of that. And I thought if I did, I shouldn't experience any anxiety. But some of that left me small, left my life small, and left me stuck in suffering because I would be afraid of, okay, well, I have to make sure I eat this before I drink any caffeine. And I need to meditate and I need to go to bed at this time and I need to wear my blue light blocking glasses and I can't have any electronics in the bedroom. All of that can be great, it, but it, for me it wasn't, didn't provide the lasting relief. It would kept me stuck in suffering.
And then searching the internet for, I'm sure, like, what's another relief? And I came across the three principles, which I'm going to go more into. But it's universal principles about thought, mind, and consciousness. And I just took a deep dive. I read every book I can, or I could. I'm still reading books on the three principles because they're just life-changing. I did a lot of courses, you know, 12-week courses, six-week courses by amazing men and women who allowed me to have insights about thoughts and feelings that have been the most transformative to me. And it's been effortless. Um, and that's what's been so amazing. There's nothing that I needed to do to change my thoughts because our thoughts are transient. And with each new thought, I'll have a new feeling. And, and especially if I don't get caught up and I don't try to change it, my thoughts are going to change. And that has been what has been so amazing to me. I mean, not only has it transformed my relationship to stress and feelings of anxiety and feelings of panic, but it's transformed my relationships. My relationships, my you know, intimate relationships, my relationships with my children, with my coworkers, with everybody. It's also changed my relationship with food and my body, the ease I have with eating and movement, is just, I mean, it's night and day. It's what I was looking for in all of those intuitive eating programs that I would do, and mindful eating programs. And eating and exercise is going to be a whole other thing. Um, and so I brought some of those principles to the students that I've worked with and the people that I've worked with, and I shared it with friends. And that would be transformative for them, too. And during this pandemic, it gave me an opportunity to create a virtual group coaching course based on those principles that's called Peace From Within because the principles really guide you back inside yourself and you recognize that it's an inside out way. It's not outside in, it's not that situation or that person that's triggering me. It's my thoughts about that. And so what I have in my five week course is sharing the insights that have been the most transformative to me. And it's very easy, it's effortless because it's just listening. And it's just opening yourself up to a new way of understanding, a new way of thinking and allowing you to connect back into your wis inner wisdom which we all have, and our inner wisdom is always there, it's always on offer, and it's always wise. Somebody had described our kind of anxious thinking, our habitual everyday thinking, as a loud brass band, and when we are engaged in that, it can make it hard to hear our inner wisdom, which is like a gentle flute, but our gentle flute and our inner wisdom is always there. It was there when I had a panic attack, and I pulled over, and I called my mom, and I called my psychiatrist, and I got help, and so... I want to connect you back to your inner wisdom and I want you to have peace from within and I want you to end my five weeks knowing that you are so strong that you are so connected to your inner wisdom that nothing can rock you very much that you can go about whatever life throws at you with confidence with ease and with peace of mind so this is my first YouTube video um, I hope to do many more but thank you so much for watching please subscribe and look out make any comments I also have an Instagram underscore peace from within. So go there for more videos, more posts about finding freedom from anxiety.